Hello, lightning biologists. Today we are going to introduce the concept of Mendelian genetics. Mendelian genetics is the study of inheritance and variation. Inheritance is something that you receive from your parents. It is a trait that is passed on from one generation to the next generation. Those traits will have different variations or different types that will be expressed. Let's take an inventory of the variations of traits that you have. Do you have free or attached earlobes? You might have to go to a mirror and look. Do your earlobes look like these here or are they free? Do your ears hang low? Can they wobble back and forth or are they completely attached all the way down to the end? Do you have dimples? When you smile, do you have dimples or are they absent? Do you have a cleft in your chin or no cleft? Do you have a straight hairline? Or when you pull up your hair on your forehead, do you have what's known as a widow's peak? Take a look at your fingers. If between the, knuck the two knuckles on your fingers is hair present, or is it absent? And last characteristic that we're going to look at is your thumb. When you hold your thumb up, do you have a straight thumb or does your thumb hyperextend at the joint and giving you what's called a hitchhiker's thumb? These are all traits that we express that we were given from our parents. I'd like for you to stop the video at this point and go and check your family members and see, do they have the same variation of these traits that you have, or could they have a different variation? Could they have the opposite of you? These variations or traits are controlled by factors called genes. For each trait listed, you get one gene from your biological mother and one gene from your biological father. For each trait, there is a dominant form and a recessive form. The dominant gene masks the effect of the recessive gene for the trait, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But go back through and take a look at the traits maybe you expressed. Did you have free earlobes, which is the dominant form, or do you have or attached earlobes, which is the recessive form? If your earlobes are attached, it means that you receive the recessive form of the gene from both of your parents. If you happen to have free earlobes, that means that you received at least one dominant form of that gene from at least one of your parents. You may have received it from both. In that case, you would be what's known as homozygous dominant. Traits are characteristics that you inherit from your parents. For example, with this dog, it could be the coat color, the texture of the coat, the size of the dog, the ear shape and size. You can tell that you are sisters because of their similar traits. Or this dog happened to win best of show due to his distinct traits. Sometimes we also refer to traits as characteristics. These traits are written as information in our DNA. A specific sequence of information that codes for a trait is known as a gene. A gene is a piece of DNA that codes for a particular protein that is expressed as a characteristic or trait. One gene makes one protein. Parents pass on their genes to their offspring. An heir in the BRCA1 gene can cause breast cancer. If you look at the name that we've given to this BRCA1 gene, 
you will see that it has BRA, which is for breast, and CA, which is cancer. And so this is a gene that's been identified to cause breast cancer. Alleles is a new vocabulary word and one that will be really important. An allele is a different version of the gene or a different variant of the gene. You will receive two copies of each gene, one from each of your parents. So for example, you receive chromosome number one from your mom and you receive chromosome number one from your dad. On both chromosome number ones, there would happen to be a gene, and let's just use the example for tongue rolling. If on the chromosome number one you received from dad, you have the gene variation that is dominant and allows you to roll your tongue, then we would say you have the dominant allele. However, on chromosome one you received from mom, you may have the recessive variant. The recessive variant, we would say, is the recessive allele. If you have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, they are not the same, and therefore you would be a heterozygous. However, you would still express the dominant allele characteristic because a dominant allele will mask the recessive trait. If you can roll your tongue, you have the dominant allele for that trait. Attached earlobes is a result of both parents passing on a recessive allele. So in the picture, B has two recessive alleles, meaning both parents gave their offspring a recessive allele, therefore resulting in the recessive characteristic or phenotype. Dominant is superior and it's controlling. It wins, it's going to be expressed. It doesn't matter if you have one or if you have two alleles, it will always be the one that's expressed in straight dominance. We use a capital letter of the dominant version as the symbol for the dominant allele. So for example, if we were looking at the trait, the shape of peas, and we knew that round shape was dominant, we would give a uppercase R to represent the dominant allele. The recessive is passive, it's inactive. It is going to lose if a dominant is present. It will not be expressed if a dominant allele is also there. The only time the recessive will be expressed is if only the recessive allele is present. So that would mean both parents passed on the recessive allele. We use a lowercase letter of the dominant version as the symbol. So wrinkled shape is a recessive shape in P's for the P shape. However, we don't use a lowercase w because the dominant is round. And so we use an uppercase R for round, the dominant allele, and we would use a lowercase r for the recessive. This helps us to keep straight when we start to look and assign genotype and phenotype. Genotype is the gene variant from each parent. Remember, you are going to receive one allele from each parent. So the allele combination for a specific trait gives you your gene type or genotype. There are three different genotypes that are possible. You might be homozygous, homo being the same, dominant. Homozygous dominant would mean that you received a dominant allele 
from both parents. Big R, big R would be the genotype. You may also be homozygous, same, recessive, meaning you received a recessive allele from both parents. So you would be little r, little r, homozygous recessive genotype. However, you may receive a dominant allele from one parent and a recessive allele from the other parent. These allele types are not the same and therefore you would be heterozygous. That would be the genotype. Each offspring receives one allele for a gene from each parent to determine the genotype or type of gene. The parent's genotype is heterozygous they have a dominant and a recessive allele. The genotype is what determines the phenotype, the physical appearance or the actual expression of the characteristic that is observable. How the genes are physically expressed or the appearance. These P's express the dominant allele for shape. So we would say the phenotype is round. However, we don't know for sure if the genotype is homozygous dominant or if the genotype is heterozygous because both genotypes would express the dominant round phenotype. I can determine the phenotype by looking at the P's. The P's are round. The child has many of the same phenotypes as his mother, which would mean the child looks similar to his mother. When we talk about genetics, we will look at inheritance and we will use the terminology of different generations. We will always start with parent generation and we will denote that with the letter P. This is always the first mating pair or the starting generation. The parents will be crossed and they will have offspring. The offspring is F sub 1 which means the first familial generation or the first generation of offspring, the first generation of children. In some cases, not in our culture, but if we were talking about peas, like Mendel actually talked about peas, we could take the first generation and cross them with themselves. This would provide us the second generation of offspring, which would be F sub 2, or second familial generation. The second generation is the F1 offspring. It would be the grandchildren of the parent generation. Please take some time to practice these vocabulary. You are going to be using them throughout and one of the expectations is that you will be able to use them to describe patterns of inheritance and predict probability of inheritance. So now would be a really good time to go to the Quizlets posted and practice the vocabulary. Awesome. We'll see you soon.